Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be doing an NCLEX review over gout. And this video is going to be part of an NCLEX review series over the musculoskeletal system, so be sure to check out those other videos. And as always, at the end of this video you can access the free quiz that will test you on this condition. So let's get started. So what is gout? Gout is a type of arthritis due to the accumulation of uric acid in the blood that causes these needle-like crystals to form within the joints. And this condition is very, very painful. If you've ever had a patient who has had it, just ask them how painful it is and they will let you know. Okay, so what is going on is that your patient has elevated uric acid levels and it can be of one of two things either they are producing too much uric acid in the body which we'll talk about some conditions that can cause that or they're not excreting it normally like they should and we learned in our renal videos that uric acid is one of those waste products so what happens is that it enters the blood it's filtered through the kidneys, specifically those nephrons, and then it's gonna be excreted into your urine and you're gonna void it out. So it's really important you don't have too much of this substance lingering in the blood, because if you do, it can get together, make these needle-like crystals that can accumulate in those joints and cause a lot of pain. So what exactly is uric acid? Well, uric acid is created from purine breakdown during digestion. So it's a byproduct from purine breakdown. Now, what is purine? Well, purine is a chemical compound used as a building block for nucleic acid, like your DNA and your RNA and it is found excessively in the following foods. So for nursing exams, if you're ever asked about gout, chances are you're probably gonna be asked a question about these foods that are high in purine. So I would etch these food categories in your mind because you'll probably see it again. So what foods are rich in purine? Well, we have internal organ meats, and this includes like liver, kidneys, and sweetbreads, and sweetbreads isn't some tasty type of bread. What it is, it's either the thymus or the pancreas, and it's one of those internal organs that people eat, and it's rich in purine. Also, your red meats, seafood, like anchovies, sardines, scallops, and tuna, and alcohol, especially beer. So what can cause high uric acid levels in the body? Well, we just talked about that high intake of those pure and rich foods. However, other things that can cause it are if the patient consumes high amounts of fruit juice or sodas that contain high fructose corn syrup, this is shown to increase uric acid levels, along with high amounts of alcohol. Well, we just learned that beer is really rich in purines, but alcohol, whenever it enters into the blood and is filtered into the kidneys and it goes into the filtrate, which is urine, that the alcohol and the uric acid actually compete with one another. And the kidneys, the nephron, will pick the alcohol to be excreted and leave the uric acid behind. So it's not being excreted like it should, so it builds up in the body. Other things that can cause it are like those kidney problems that we talked about in our renal series. And one renal problem is like chronic renal failure. And why is that? Because remember, those nephrons just really aren't working anymore. And the nephron, specifically that glomerulus, is filtering that blood and removing those waste products. But chronic renal failure can't do it. So those waste products build up and uric acid will be one of those. Another thing, are medications and these include aspirin so if you see an option on a test which prn medication should you give the patient who's having gout pain don't pick aspirin because aspirin even in the lowest doses can increase those uric acid levels and we're going to talk about the medications used to treat gout in our nursing interventions Another medication is cyclosporin. This is an immune suppressor. Also diuretics, like those loop and thiazide diuretics. Loop diuretics, remember, are furosemide, also called Lasix, 
and thiazide or like hydrochlorothiazide HCTZ. And what happens is whenever a patient's taken diuretics, what do they do? They urinate a lot. So they're at risk for dehydration. So whenever a patient becomes dehydrated, their urine gets really concentrated, which is great conditions for uric acid to build up in, because remember it's one of those waste products in the urine. Also, how these diuretics work is that they decrease the nephron's ability to excrete ureate, which is part of uric acid, so you're gonna get elevated uric acid levels. Another thing, dehydration, which we just discussed, um, being overweight, having a body mass index BMI greater than 25 at risk for that, and actually helping the patient lose weight, educating them about will actually decrease their uric acid levels and decrease their episodes of gout. And another thing, lastly, is the physical stress, such as patient being hospitalized, having an illness, and surgery. And I have had many patients who have been admitted for surgery and they came back, they had some complications and they developed gout. And as a nurse, you really gotta watch out for this because your patient is most likely gonna be admitted for something else, but just that physical stress on the body is gonna make these attacks come out if they have a history of it. So whenever you're doing that head to toe assessment, you really need to be looking at those joints and seeing if they're warm, they're red, and the patient's gonna tell you, I'm having some severe pain because this is not something the patient isn't gonna know about. Like they're gonna tell you, I am having severe pain. And if you see a joint that's red, inflamed, and swollen, you wanna report that to the doctor because gout could be coming out and they can give them some medications to help with that. Now let's look at the signs and symptoms of gout. We're gonna look at acute gout attacks and chronic attacks. So first, acute. Okay, acute gout attacks tend to happen randomly. And the patient may have a one-time attack with gout in their whole lifetime, or they may have a few scattered gout attacks. And they tend to last about one to two weeks. And between attacks, if they have more than one, they usually go several months between attacks, or they can even go years before they have another one. And because of this, because it's acute, it tends to not cause long-term joint damage as compared to the chronic gout attacks. Now, with acute gout attacks, what happens is that it tends to start out in that big toe. So remember that. So whenever you are assessing your patients, be sure to look at those feet who have the gout because in that big toe is probably where you're going to find it. It can also be in the fingers and the elbow and the wrist, the knees, the heel, or those other little toes. And what's going to happen usually is that it's going to come on suddenly and they're going to have this swelling, severe pain, redness in a joint. And it's probably going to wake them at night. They're going to wake in the middle of the night with this severe pain. And what's happened is that these uric acid crystals have got in within this joint, have formed in there, and it's causing the joint to become inflamed in that surrounding tissue. So the patient he was describing his gout as like sand in between the joint. Couldn't move it and that it just felt like gritty little sand granules inside the joint and it was very painful and it's those uric acid crystals in there. And what happens is that this pain tends to intensify within four to 24 hours. So it's super painful and then it's gonna get worse in pain. And it peaks between four to 24 hours along with the stiffness. So whenever you're assessing the patient, looking at that, if it starts in the toe, may look something similar to this. On the toe, you will see below it, it's very red and then you have this protrusion coming out. That is where there is that inflammation and swelling, and then the site will be really red like that and warm to the touch. Now the thing is, you don't want to touch this site because it is very sensitive to pressure. It is gonna cause the patient a lot of pain. I remember with that particular patient, even the bed linens, just that thin flat sheet could not even touch the toe, and a lot of patients report that because that pressure intensifies the pain. So as a nurse, protect that site, which we're gonna talk about more in our nursing interventions. Now let's look at chronic attacks. Okay, these tend to happen due to those chronic elevated uric acid levels. 
which leads to repeated acute gout attacks. So they have higher acid levels and they're just constantly having these acute attacks. Well, that's gonna cause some issues to those joints and bones. So you're gonna get joint damaged. And from where you have those ure ureate crystals, what's gonna happen is that they're gonna get together and they're gonna form large masses. And these large masses are called tophi. So if you ever see the word tophi or ever hear it, think gout, gout, gout. And what are tophi? They are these white yellowish nodules and they can be found in certain places. Where you can actually see them are the ones that are found under the skin. And they'll be this nodule that'll be yellowish, whitish color. And you can find them on the helix of the ear. You can also find them on the fingers, the elbow, or the toes. Ones you probably can't see as well, uh, you can find those within the joints and the bones. And whenever these large crystals have formed together in these clumps, that can cause problems for those joints and bones. So you can get bone deformity and joint damage. Also, your patient will probably have itching. They can have itching also in the acute attacks, just from where that skin is really inflamed and the skin can peel as well. And the patient, because they have these constant high uric acid levels, they're at risk for uric acid kidney stones. And we talked in great detail about those type of stones in the renal calculi video. Now let's look at our nursing interventions for gout. What are we gonna do for this patient who has this condition? Okay, first of course, what we're gonna do is we're gonna assess that joint. Look at the swelling. Is it warm? Is it red? How painful is it to the patient? Where is it located? And we want to look at their health history. Do they have a history of gout? Because remember, if they are there for something else, like pneumonia, an infection, they are at risk for developing gout. So you want to be on high alert and assessing those joints to make sure gout is not presenting. And if gout does present, you want to ask the patient about the events that led up to the attack because every patient's different. Some patients will get a gout attack if they eat high amounts of seafood or those purin foods, while others will only get a gout attack when they become sick. So you wanna ask them those questions so you can help them prevent further attacks later on. And you wanna educate them on avoiding, again, those high purine foods. And what were they? They were seafoods, those internal organ meats, red meats, and alcohol, especially beer. And watch taking those medications, such as aspirin, because aspirin's really easy to get. It's over the counter. You don't have to have a prescription for it. So the patient may be having pain. Aspirin may be something that they think about taking, but in reality, they're actually making their condition worse because it increases uric acid levels. So no aspirin, avoid alcohol, avoid high fructose corn syrup drinks, and avoid becoming dehydrated because all those things increase uric acid levels. Now, when they have it, there's some things that you can do. If the patient can tolerate it, you can offer them a cold or warm compress alternating between the cold and the warm. But again, a lot of patients can't even tolerate any slight pressure on the foot, so some patients can't do this. Another thing is staying hydrated at least two to three liters per day, and unless it's contraindicated, of course. And why do you wanna do this? What's the reasoning behind this? Well, you wanna keep those uric acid levels low, and we know dehydration increases uric acid levels, so that's one reason. Another reason is that they have high uric acid levels right now, that's why they have gout. So when you have high uric acid levels, you're at an increased risk of developing those uric acid stones. So keeping that kidney system flush with water helps prevent those stones from forming, so that is why for that. Another thing is keep them on bed rest with that affected extremity in like a cradle or a footboard. You can usually get those from supply and that's to protect that foot or elbow or whatever they have from linens getting on top of it or accidentally someone hitting it, things like that because remember that causes the patient a lot of pain. And if your patient is overweight, you wanna educate them on the importance of losing weight because this can actually help prevent these gout attacks happening because being obese increases uric acid levels. Now let's look at the medications that the physician may order for gal and what your role is as a nurse. Okay, during that acute attack, 
patient needs some relief, they're having a lot of pain and swelling. So physician may prescribe NSAIDs to decrease that inflammation like ibuprofen or corticosteroids like prednisone. Along with, they may also prescribe a drug called colchicine. And colchicine helps prevent gout attacks along with providing them that relief from that inflammation and pain going on. So it decreases the swelling and the uric acid levels. However, you have to watch out for GI upset with this medication, along with neutropenia, that's the decrease of those white blood cells. If your patient starts reporting a sore throat or they're not healing from something, definitely you wanna investigate that more. Along with toxicity, and signs and symptoms of toxicity could be tingling, numbness in the fingers or the toes or a grayish color to the lips. So you wanna watch out for that and educate your patient who's gonna be going home on this to watch out for that as well. And to not take this medication with grapefruit juice or consume grapefruit juice while taking this medication because it increases those risk of toxicity. Another drug prescribed in gout is called allopurinol, also called xylopram. And this drug is used for the prevention of future gout attacks. It does not relieve current acute attacks. So remember that, colchicine and NSAIDs and corticosteroids are for that. But whenever you have someone who's having those chronic uric acid levels that are super high, allopurinol is the best for that for keeping it down. So this medication may be prescribed with colchicine or NSAIDs and uh, you want to educate the patient who's taking this that they will need to get regular annual eye exams because this medication can cause vis vision changes. And um, it's best to avoid large doses of vitamin C supplements while taking allopurinol because it can increase the risk of the patient developing a renal stone, renal calculi. Okay, so that wraps up this NCLEX review over gout. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.